Ladies, welcome to this edition of the House of Preeminence. Ladies, the paradigm has changed. The playing fields have leveled. Your success is a whole different landscape than it was a few years ago. And you know that I bring you the experts, the leaders, the wisdom relevant to get you to where you want to be right now. And my next guest is exactly that because she has a new take on mindset, on, on the psychology of success, on energy, um, on all things feminine, mostly on what it's gonna take for you to get out of your own way and get to the success that you really, really dream of. We're gonna explore that topic. Stay tuned for my gorgeous Kazia Luckett. Welcome, my lovely. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. So I have a, 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 qu a question to ask you, Kazia, before we dive into your topic, is what does preeminence mean to you? Do you know what? I think preeminence is a feeling more than anything else. And I know you and I have talked about this before. It is just this elegance, beauty, the way that women hold themselves, the way that women command, you know, the, the, the universe to collide in the right way for us to be able to step into what we were put on this planet to be, do and achieve. And for me, it just it's just a feeling. How do you describe a feeling that just feels feels so feminine but so powerful and so meaningful to so many? Mm. That's that, that's exactly the right answer, <laughs> for especially for this edition, which is all about which is all about a return to grace and the power of the power of beauty in success, achievement, and and business. And it isn't just, of course, just super superficial, superficial beauty. It, it is a, a state, as, as you said. So I'm curious, um, Kazia, what is the difference between positive psychology? You are a very, very, very um, talented, incredibly, um, so, so much experience, so many, so many arcs to your arcs to your bow that you've brought into your own methodology and your and your own approach. So, what is the difference between positive psychology and traditional psychology? Well, a positive psychology really came about uh, from one man, a, a gentleman called Martin Seligman, who was who was kind of put into the the, the chair position of psychology and. One of the things that had bothered him was that, you know, traditional psychology focuses on what's wrong with the world. And actually, when we shine a lens of the world onto what is, is, is not going right, we're always going to find things that are not going right. And so, so positive psychology is what makes people, organizations and communities flourish and thrive. What truly allows us to tap into the strengths, tap into the positivity that we all have within us and shine a light on it and actually share it more with the world. And so it's it's been a beautiful kind of shift and change. And I'm not talking about the toxic positivity of just think happy thoughts, because there's, there's lots of that, especially at the moment. Um, but really what makes people flourish and thrive and so many different things um, make people flourish and thrive. It depends on the individual. But if we can tap into the core essence of that, then we can live happier lives. So that really underscores this whole shift away from, um, especially especially in, in marketing and business, the shift away from trying to fix things or that we need, or that we need fixing, or something wrong with us, into using our potential or use, using different tools for to, to catapult us towards our potential is that is that yeah where and, you're going? And, and if we look at kind of organizations and people you know I know when I was in in corporate land you, you'd get your review and they would say all this gorgeous stuff about you and the only thing that you know you would then work on is not your strengths not the things that you were really frigging good at it was the things that 
needed to be improved. And there have been studies out there that show that actually if we focus on our strength, we increase productivity, we increase the bottom line, we increase people's happiness, we in increase their, their, their ability to live a good life. Why do we want to shine a light on those things that we would consider weaknesses when we've got this beautiful ability to elevate our strengths into something far greater and shine our light out? You know, I, I'm no good at figures, facts and figures, no good at it at all. That's why I have a beautiful accountant. That for him is his element, it's his deliciousness, it's his zone of genius he would not be interested in diving into the insights of somebody's mind and the thoughts and beliefs that keep them held back from where, you know, stepping into their true power and potential. So why are we, we starting from a very young age to try and get individuals to focus on their weaknesses rather than to step into their zone of genius? Mm. Yeah, I love that. And I'm, I'm really curious, you, you, your clients are a, a lot of um, high achievers, already high, achieve, high achievers, women who, who, who've known success, who know success, um, even I believe some celebrities. Mm -hmm. um, this, I, t tell us about the story, you know, the, sto the story of, of their lives. So, so success and money, obviously there doesn't, it doesn't cure everything. It doesn't solve every, everything. <laughs> Is it? no, so, so. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> no, so, because, because when when you're when you're um, aspiring to a level, especially a level of, of financial success, at, at a certain level, you're looking kind of up at the people that you that you want to emulate, and you and you fit. You're thinking they've all got they've got it all figured out. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm guessing that's not the case. <laughs> no, no. At every level, we have to work on our internal dialogue. We have to work on our belief system. We have to work on the, you, you know, um, our limitations. At every level, we 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 have to stretch. And when you've made that stretch, you get some sort of comfort. But there are certain things that even when we make that stretch, are still kind of holding us back, keeping us restricted, limitations, the belief system, the internal dialogue. You know, I've got multimillionaire clients that still worry about money. You, you have to upgrade your belief system as you're upgrading your skill set, your skill set, your 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 business, your um, you know, your level of success. And most people get to that level of success and if you haven't brought up the, 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 the belief system with it, then quite often you either find that you get stuck at a, a set plateau or alternatively, you keep referring back to, you know, a, a, a set point, a success set point that no matter how far you go, you just keep returning to it. And that's because nine times out of 10, the beliefs and the internal dialogue, you know, the thoughts and monkey chatter in our head, is keeping us restricted. And nine times out of 10, when I, I dive into this with clients, there'll be an experience, a memory, um, something that has kept them in a repeating pattern that they just can't shift out of. And for me, it's just unpacking what that pattern is, unpacking the memory that they've got, unpacking the story around it, unpacking the limiting beliefs so that they can then scale to the next level. But anyone that thinks, right, once you become a multi-gazillionaire, you're never going to have any problems. We're human. We, therefore, we're always going to have human problems at every level. It doesn't matter whether you're earning your first 100 or whether you're trying to hit your billion dollar mark. We're human. Therefore, we go through human experiences. I love that. I think as as you upgrade your life, you've got to keep up, upgrade. We were just talking about you just just, just me mentioned that um, our, the way that we the way that we refer to our past and our past stories. Do you, do you want to bring that that statistic out because it's it, it's it's really interesting and totally relevant. Yeah. Well, fifty percent of your memories might not be anything but lies. 
So what do I mean by this? You know, uh, how, how are we walking around telling ourselves lies? You know, many of you might be listening in, in a sheer panic thinking, oh my gosh, the stories that we create nine times out of 10, definitely around our, our belief system are created at a very young age. So, you know, normally by the time we're seven, we have a, a good structure around our belief system. And by the time we're 35, 95% of our subconscious programming is already, you know, set in stone. So, if you think back to when you were seven as to what you believe was possible for you as a seven-year-old little girl, your lens of the world was going to be quite limited. So your lens of the world might be that, you, you know, you get to live in a, in a nice house and, you know, meet the prince if you're into fairy tales. But your lens of what that actually looks like is very limited. And what tends to happen is we go through an experience we bring in the information and then we create a sense of meaning around it. We have to give things meaning, especially those things that are highly emotionally charged. So something bad's happened to us, we've got a high emotional charge. We're gonna try and figure out a sense of understanding as to why that's just happened. Now, if that happens at a young age, your lens of the world is very limited. And therefore the story that you start to tell around that limitation is, is also going to be limited. I gave, um, I was um, presenting just, just an hour ago, and I gave the analogy of a little boy that goes fishing for the very first time, and he catches his very first fish, and it's tiny, it's like a, a tiny little diddler, but it's big in his little hands. So in his mind, he's constructed this story that he's a mighty fisherman. In actual fact, not only is this fish big in his hands, it took two of them to pull it in. Now, obviously, any well-meaning father or, or mother, you know, seeing a child near water with a, a, a fishing rod is going to come and help because the last thing you want is your child in the water. But in their little minds, they've created this story that the fish was so big, it needed both me and a parent to pull it in. And then the next time they go fishing, the fish again is big. His hands have grown a little bit bigger, but the fish is a little bit bigger. So again, he's reinstalled that belief that he's a mighty fisherman. And then he gets to a stage where the little diddlers that would negate his mighty fisherman status, he throws back into the water. He doesn't even think about it. He's created this beautiful story and belief that he's a mighty fisherman and it doesn't matter what he catches, he's still a mighty fisherman. Now that's an empowering belief, but if you imagine that for something around money, I mean, when I was when I was younger, younger, my first memory of money was being given some money by my dad's friend. And I remember my dad saying to me, where did you get that from? And I said, oh, I got it from Uncle Keith. And he goes, well, how did you get that? And I, I, he, I said to him, well, I asked for it. And he'd give me five pounds, it was a lot of money back then. And my dad said to me, you never ask anybody for money ever again. Well, my belief for a very long time was I couldn't ask for money. If I'm running a business, it's difficult to earn a living if you can't ask for money. So when we start to de deconstruct the memories, deconstruct the stories that we've created, we can start to create more empowering belief systems. And that's how I help my clients go from the plateau that they're at to reaching the end goal is how can we de deconstruct those stories and create more powerful beliefs? Mm, interesting. I should be I should be revisiting some of mine. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I'm I'm a um, neuroplasticity geek. How do how in your explanation? do we actually instill those new beliefs so that they become natural because yeah because I, I know I know what it, it takes you know for the for, for the for the brain to do um, biologically so what what do, what do people need to do when they, when they they are they are focused on upgrading their beliefs um, and changing changing those stories to, to you know to upgrade their their reality and their results what what needs to happen? for us to get that in the brain, that it, that it becomes automatic? 
Well, lots of people would say, well, it's affirmations. You know, I hear a lot of people saying affirmations, 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 and affirmations are great. But if you don't believe the affirmation, then it, uh, you're just wasting your words. They're just coming out of your, your mouth. And if, you, if you're not looking for evidence of those affirmations, then there's nothing to reinforce that, 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 that belief, that, that affirmation that you're putting out to the world. So with my clients, what I get them to do is I get them to rewrite the story. I get them to rewrite the story nine times out of 10 from an adult's perspective because our lens of the world as an adult is totally different to the lens of the world as a child. And we look at it from lots of different angles. And when you can start to put pit, pit, pieces of the puzzle together, you can start to create a new story. And then to a certain degree, it is the repetition. You know, if you go out for a night out with the girlies and you have a rip roaring evening where the wine is flowing and the conversations going and all of those things. If you were then asked by your partner and they'd say, well, what kind of night did you have? Chances are you might reduce that story down a little bit. You might taper it down so it was it, a bit more refined evening than the shots that you were doing on the bar. If you were speaking to your girlfriends, the story would be expanded. You would expand the story. Oh, do you remember we did the shots and then so-and-so did this? And, and you kind of, you pick up on all of the little nuances of that, that, that evening, the emotions, um, how your senses were heightened, the smells, the sound, the touch, the, all of those beautiful things. And you create this beautiful tapestry in your mind of what it actually was. The story that you continue to repeat is the story that's going to fire those neurons together and seal them together. And essentially, that, that's what we're doing. We're firing those new neurons. We're, we're excited about, you know, the, 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 the new story that we're telling. And the more we tell it, the more it becomes part of who, who we are. But it has to be a story that we believe. And that's about finding little pieces of evidence in the world that we live in. You know, I have clients that say, oh, no, I'm just not successful. And you, you go through their career and, oh, I was just lucky there. And I, you know, I just happened to know the right person at the right time. And it's just like you might have happened to know the right person at the right time, but you still had to step forward into that space. And it's taking ownership of the bits that we have done and releasing the bits that we don't need to hold on to. And imposter syndrome is a prime one with this. You know, I was just lucky. Things just happened to fall in my plate. It's a fluke. Somebody's going to find me out. Nine times out of 10, it's the highly successful women that suffer with imposter syndrome. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, before we move on, I just want just to highlight two two really good exercises and tips that, that you dropped in there. The one for, late, for ladies to go and do after this, one, one is to rewrite your story or rewrite one of your stories or your, your childhood story from an adult point of view. And then the second one, which I know is such a powerful one, is to keep, make, is to make a habit of finding ev evidence of your success. So those are two really, really key um, pointers for for people and I love and I love them and I know that they're 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 really powerful so and I and I and I love and I love this idea of of um the way we can continually keep making making things up as we go along <laughs> just like keep, keep making things up as we go along which is what we do really um so, so I would I'd love to know you have your own um approach it's called the energy code yes Yes. So the energy code. Tell um, us about the energy code. Yeah. So the energy code is, is uh, before I, I became a positive psychologist, I used to run a female based concierge company. So I had a team of 35 that would go in and help incredibly successful women juggle the work life balance. And one of the things that I started to see time and time again with these ladies is that they had all of the elements of success, but still weren't happy. And I started to notice that most of the corporate ladies that I worked with and myself, including at that moment in time, we were all functioning from a masculine energy and a masculine energy is all about the doing. 
It's all about the push, it's about the hustle, it's about the action. But actually, if we're continually in this space of the masculine energy rather than, you know, the beautiful ebb and flow of a masculine doing and feminine being, we end up burning out. And in actual fact, in that particular business, I ended up burning out. And this sent me on a quest to say, right, okay, what are the different energy spaces that we naturally navigate? And how can we harness those so that we know when to push and we know when to pull back. We don't end up burning out. We give ourselves permission to stop. We honor what is going on in our body. We honor what it is that we need. And, and we honor you know, the times that we need to push forward and the times that we need to pull back. And what I started to notice when I was doing this with clients is, depending on whether they were an evening person or a morning person, determined the time that they were better to do business, the time that they might have needed a nap, the time that they moved into a creative energy space. So I identified four different energy spaces. So the first one is nurture and it sounds delicious. It sounds like you're gonna be wrapped up in a blanket and you're gonna have facials and you're gonna have all this gorgeousness, but actually it's something completely different. The nurture energy space is the survival zone. It's when you've been pushing and pushing and pushing your body and you're always in your head and you've disconnected from your neck down to your body. You're not tapping into your heart and soul. You're only working with the brain. You've been in the masculine and you are a fingertip breath away from complete and utter unraveling. And in the nurture energy space, we have three different levels. The deepest one is known as the cave. And the cave is where we literally go in and we unravel. And normally when we move into nurture is because we're forced to move into nurture. So being forced into nurture looks like an illness. So for me, mine was pneumonia. My husband came home one day to find me curled up on the floor, unable to breathe. It might be a car accident. It might be losing your job all of those things that are gonna force you to stop. And in the nurture energy space, that is the only thing that you need to learn how to do is just stop and give your body permission to do what it needs. Because even whether you're running an entrepreneurial business or whether you're in business business, a lot of women, just ignore all the bodily functions. You know, they're typing away on the computer and it's like, I'm really thirsty, I, I just keep on going. Typing away on the computer, I really need to go to the toilet, but I'm just gonna keep going because I haven't got time. And when things don't work, rather than listening and taking a step back and moving into the feminine, what tends to happen is we work harder and longer and faster. And that's when we go into exhaustion. So when you learn how to navigate the nurture energy space, then you, you utilize three other energy spaces. Uh, whisper, create and shine. And whisper is another feminine energy and create and shine is a masculine. And what these allow you to do is we, I, I say it's easier to describe, we have an energetic bucket. So each day you're either filling up that bucket or you're draining it down. So when you do the things that you love to do, you're filling up that bucket. When you're resting and replenishing, you're filling up that bucket. When you're nurturing and nourishing, you're filling up that bucket. When you're doing work, when you're doing things that you don't enjoy, when you're sat next to somebody in a meeting that's negative, you're emptying your bucket. So our aim is to keep that bucket topped up. The whisper energy space is the stopping. It's the permission to just be, permission to lie on the sofa if you fancy it for the day or get a good book or go for a walk or, or, or take time out for you. And sleep is a whisper energy space. So throughout the night, we top up our bucket ready to go again the following day. Once we've topped up our bucket to overflowing, then we can move into the action spaces, the masculine doing spaces of create and shine. And create is that, you know, when you get that download and you've got all that lovely juicy creativity coursing through your veins and you know exactly what you're gonna do with who at the right time and the magic starts to happen. And shine is where you're literally in your zone of, of genius. You are totally in alignment. Everything feels amazing with the world and you, you just feel on top of the world. And you can, you can do that being on stage, presenting to a thousand people, or you could do that walking your dog, you know, when everything just feels amazing with the world. 
And when you navigate through those spaces and they're influenced by the moon, your feminine cycle, the seasons, you can start to work out and write in your diary, right, this time last month, I moved into a whisper space, so I better clear my diary. But I know that this time last month, I then moved into create. Now I can, you know, create new projects with my team, or now I can move into shine and stand on stage. You can start to plan your diary around it. And from that place, it starts to become effortless. Mm. I love I love that it fits into the cycles and the and and, and the cosmos and and and, and nature and um, the the universal forces as well. It's beautiful. So it's something that you just keep using to check in with yourself all, all the time. Yes. Yeah, so I have a free quiz. You don't need to put your email in it or anything. If you just go to energycodeforwomen.com, they answer eight questions and it will tell you what energy space you're in. Because I want to make sure that every woman understands the energetics of the, of, of the spaces that they move through. And if you do that each day and you just make a little note in your diary, over three months, you'll start to see patterns emerging as to your natural peaks and troughs. And then you can kind of overlay that with your feminine cycle if you still have it or the lunar cycle. The seasons tend to interact with it slightly different, but if you think we've just come out of, uh, of, of winter, winter is naturally the nurture energy spaces, the time where we hibernate, the time where we draw back our energy. It's the time where, you know, we reflect and take time out for us. And now we're coming into spring. Spring is the create energy. This is where we've got the energy for the spring cleaning. This is where we've got the energy for creativity. This is where we start to plant the seeds that are gonna bear fruit in the summer and the autumn. So again, we can start to run our business. So my business, my financial year, like many, starts in April. And the reason it starts in April is that's the start of the year for me. That's where creativity kicks in. That's where I come into my best in spring, through summer, in autumn, and then in winter, I pull back and draw back in again. Hmm. I love that. I, I, I do the same. And it's amazing the way that the energy code and the four, those four quadrant quadrants fit beautifully into the preeminent, the, um, the nine graces of, of preeminence um, yeah. with renewal, obviously being in the, 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 the nurture, the nurture zone. Um, so that is that's absolutely fabulous and it's and I love it is because it's it's practical so what would you how would you approach ladies out there now what is the first thing that you that you kind of appraise when um, when you when you meet new clients or you have have chats and and they and they think that they're simply in a in a place of maybe financial non non achievement is, is what, what is your what is it the, the first thing that, that you look at, Kazia? So interestingly, when when clients first come to me, they come to me with a problem. They come because something is not working, and no matter what they're doing, they just can't shift it in one way or the other. And it's really understanding why it's not working. So if we take the money, for example, you know, they're not generating the revenue. Nine times out of 10, when we look at their energy code, we look at where they're currently sitting, nine times out of 10, most people tend to be in the nurture energy space which means that they have been trying to fix their money problems by being in the masculine by being in the doing so they've been doing 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 and then wondering why the doing isn't working if we think about our bodies as you know a, a, an energetic magnet Whoever we're being is what we actually attract in, not what we're doing. Obviously, we do need to take action, but it's who we're being that draws in the money. It's who we're being that draws in the clients. It's who we're being. If your beingness is your bucket's completely empty, actually, when you look inside it, it's got like bits of fluff and maybe some sand or, or maybe it's got a hole in the bottom of it 
the chances of you being able to attract the clients, attract the money, attract the things that you want are very limited in that space because you're in constriction, not expansion. So the first thing is really understanding how we can get them to surrender the doingness, stepping into the beingness, and working on the expansion of the beingness to be able to attract that in, to be able to, you know, vibrate at the right level that they, the actions that they then take give a return. Because there's so many of us that are out there doing stuff for the sake of doing because that's what we've been told that we need to do. But the doing isn't always the answer. Mm. Yes, that's our that's our message. That's our preeminent message. Our preeminent message is that you have to embody preeminence in order to see preeminence. So um, to totally, totally in in harmony with that that philosophy and, and approach. It's that's beautiful, and it's and I love the way that it's it's so um, clear and 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 simplified, and that anybody can relate to it as well. Um, so. What's your big vision, Kezia? What's your big vision for for is is it to is it to take the the energy code to the world in a bigger way? What's your own personal vision as you as you step forward? Well, I, I mean, I'm lucky that the energy code and mind conditioning therapy, which is another um, thing that women come to me, which is all about changing those limitations of beliefs is out you know across the globe at this moment in time for me my big vision is how can i make women more impactful how can i support them to step into their absolute power and release those limitations you know just remove the veil of what they think is holding them back so that they can go out there and be impactful because every client that i work with is an incredibly powerful person they, they, I mean, or, or women, because I only work with women. They're incredibly powerful women. But just because we step into that space of being incredibly powerful doesn't mean that there aren't things that hold us back from putting that power out into the world and making that impact into the world exponentially grow. So anything that I can do to be able to guide and help another lady to fully embrace their you their beingness, their power, their impact into the world just lights my fire. I mean, it just, I just, I'm covered in goosebumps, just gives me goosebumps. So that is my biggest vision is how can I make women more impactful so that they can not only change their lives, but change the lives of generations to come. Because what we do here and now doesn't just change our life. It has an influence on those around us. It has an influence on the, the children that we have or the nieces and the nephews or the friends' children. We get an opportunity to be impactful. And um, I just wanna make sure that every woman takes that full, full, you know, full opportunity and grasps it with both hands. Well, it's our honour and privilege to to offer you the platform to be able to do that. Um, what was coming to me while you were talking was was that you're the the change makers change maker. <laughs> I am. Yes. <laughs> I've heard of the influencers influencer, and I feel like you're the change makers change makers change maker. I love as, that. You, as you're really. Yeah. Can we officially dub you that, please? <laughs> we can. And you know what? I might take that and run with it because a lot of my clients call me Wendy Rhodes from the hit film Billions, but a lot of people don't know what Billions is. So they're just like, well, what does that mean? Um, but the change makers, change maker, I love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. It's okay. I'm good with words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's, that's excellent. Really, really wonderful. Um, so we are going to put all the links as to, uh, to where people can find you and the, and the resources and how to follow up and, and find out more about buying your book and the energy code and taking that else that you would like to share with our audience today from your heart just you know woman to woman Kezia. One of the biggest disservices that we as women do is think that we need something in order to be impactful in this world. Just by being you, 
you are enough. Just by being you, you can leave a positive, impactful footprint on the world. So just be more you. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's another mic drop. <laughs> okay, wonderful. And um, we're going to see more of you, aren't we? Hopefully. <laughs> uh, what kind of what kind of um, I'm not going to give all the secrets away, but what kind of support um, do you think that 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 through 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 the House of Preeminence we can we can you know in your own expertise um, that we can we can offer our audience and our readers regularly. I think, to be honest with you, there, there's so many different angles that we could come in at. I think, you know, really being able to build on the energy code and, you know, the different aspects of pre preeminence, the mindset work is just, if we can change the beliefs and the stories and the, the internal dialogue in this, we can change the world because it's this that's hold us back. We have all the things that we need. We have all the context, the, the information, you know, you've got this gorgeous magazine that's feeding women's soul and nourishing their, their mind and their body every single month. You have everything that you need. We just need to get over this. Once we get over this and we tap into the, the, the aspects of us that make us so freaking powerful as women, the world's our oyster. It really is. The world is our oyster. I love that. I think that's a perfect note to finish on. Change, change your internal dialogue and we change the world. So thank you so much, lovely, for introducing us to your to your universe and your, your unique, unique approach. Um, I think it's really highly valuable, really, really needed. I love the way that it's not hierarchical either. It doesn't apply to to at any level. Level. It's it's a universal thing. Um, so congratulations on the work that you've done and and the approach that that you've that you've got and that you've um, articulated this beautiful this beautiful container of the energy code. And we look we so look forward to learning more about it. I know I do. I should be. I'm going to be diving in. Fabulous. So thank you so much, Kezia. Thank you.